your hands together. We gonna take it back. This is black. This is black. Can we take it back a little bit?
most merciful God. Thank you, God. Thank you for your word. That is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Bless us now, God. Send the word that would educate us, comfort us, encourage us, guide us, strengthen us. Bless us now, God, because we know that it will not go out from you and return void, but that it will hit the target that is it intended to. Now may the words of my mouth and the sweet meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, for you are my strength and my redeemer. Let the people of God say amen. amen. The book of Jonah. The book of Jonah, chapter 1. Great for those who have joined us on social media this morning. We thank you for tuning in. We thank those who are here in the sanctuary as we stand on our feet for the reading of God's Word. The book of Jonah, chapter 1, is God in verse 1. Amen. Now, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amate, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh. Somebody say Nineveh. Nineveh. That great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah, but Jonah. rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, he found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners, the sailors, they were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meaneth thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word and give us a better understanding. I preach this morning. I'd like to preach from the subject when God gets gangster. When God gets gangster. Gangster is a term used often to describe a tough, a hard individual. Somebody who doesn't play around. Amen? Someone you ought not mess with. You know, like Ray Ray and Gangster. They are usually brutally honest and they normally get their way by any means necessary. Can I get a witness? Some of us love the gangster type. Let me say that again. The baby will help me preach this morning. Thank you, baby. Some of us love the gangster type. Some sisters love that gangster time. Am I in the right place? Amen, yeah. Pastor. You know, like Curtis 50 Cent Jackson. Tyrese Gibson. Let me go back for the older folks. Richard Roundtree. Let me go around the corner for everybody. John Wayne. The Duke. Let me go back a little further. 
Sydney Poitier. All right. All right. <laughs> come back to what Memphis, Elvis Presley. Even Barack Obama. All right. All right. Thanks. Well, how about Maurice Chestnut? Common. T.I. Blair Underwood. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. L.L. Right. Cool J. Yeah. Terrence Howard. Yeah. Fat Joe. Y'all know about leaving the back. Yeah. <laughs> Tupac. And the notorious B.I.G. Somebody say next. Yes. A lot of y'all wanted to know who shot Ghost. Mm. Was it Tasha or Tyreek? Somebody say yes. yes. Power. We are fascinated with gangsters. Mm -hmm. With power. Or a rough neck. Come on, somebody. A thug. Mm. We are fascinated with that type until he started to get a little thuggish <laughs> with you. Amen? Amen. Gangsters seem to carry with them an aura of fascination mm -hmm. that goes beyond infamy. Mm -hmm. And it enters a realm even sometime of worship to the gangster. Despite their violent tendencies and criminal enterprises, many gangsters are celebrated as folk heroes these days. We just love a gangster. And probably that's due more than anything to the films that are made, movies made about gangsters. The gangster genre created immortality for the infamous. But in reality, the gangster comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But there are many types of gangsters. Can I just run through a little bit of our history? About gangsters. There was Al Capone. He was the original Scarface. You know. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> we lost our face. Capone was sent to Alcatraz for income tax evasion, and he later died of syphilis. Then there's Lucky Luciano. Some of y'all might not have heard of Lucky Luciano, but if you're from New York, Luciano was also known as the father of organized crime. Mm -hmm. He took criminal enterprises, adding the business side to everything. But Lucky wasn't lucky after all. Mm -hmm. He died of a heart attack in 62 at the age of 64. Mm -hmm. Then there was John Gotti. Mm -hmm. Gotti, probably the most popular and modern gangster. His criminal activities was inspiration for the Sopranos television series that won a lot of awards. He was the boss of the Gambino crime family. And when he was arrested and put on trial for racketeering, at least, uh, for killing at least five people. And while behind bars, he didn't have the same benefits as most gangsters. He spent the majority of his sentence in solitary. And he was even beaten up by another inmate. He eventually died of throat cancer in his cell. Then there was John Dillinger. Anybody remember John Dillinger? While he wasn't a member of the traditional mafia in New York, he was just as notorious. He organized robbery syndicates that took on the FBI and who was G-Men and before he was gunned down outside of theater in the famous Lady in Red incident. That was his end. I could mention Buggy Siegel, Bonnie and Clyde, Frank Lucas, Stanley Tukey Williams, 
Let me tell you about Stanley Tukey Williams. He was an American gangster. He was known as one of the original founders and leaders of the Crip Gangs in Compton, L.A. Amen. And Williams and a friend named Raymond Washington formed an alliance, establishing the Crips as the first major street gang in South Central Los Angeles. In 1979, Tukey was convicted for the murder of four people during two robberies, and he was sentenced to death. And on December 13, 2005, he was executed by lethal injection. Gangster. Some of us, back in the day, like myself, thought we were gangsters. Come on, I ain't the only one in here. Am I the only one in here? I can see, I can tell, I ain't the only one in there. There's some show enough OGs in here. Thank you, man. I said, yeah, my granddaddy's an OG. There are even church gangsters. I was moderating over a church business meeting. Mm. Not here, but back in New York. Mm -hmm. And the church mother told the church clerk, I don't want to catch a case. <laughs> and you don't want to catch these hands. <laughs> so fall back. <laughs> Somebody said church case. <laughs> I said mother. You have arthritis. You ain't no gangster. <laughs> but, but on a serious note, there is a type of gangster that can kill you or get you killed or locked up for a long period of time if not for life. But, but the kind of gangster I want to lift up to you this morning doesn't bring death, but it brings life. It is a supernatural and compelling type of gangster. You see, it's different when God gets gangster. God's gangster is like no other kind of gangster. Mm -hmm. Most of us have felt the desire sometimes to get away from it all. Mm -hmm. We just want to fly away and be at rest. Mm -hmm. We even want to get away from God. Mm -hmm. But where should you go? Mm -hmm. Where can you go to get away from God? Mm -hmm. Jonah learned this the heart. David said it like this, Lord, where, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, you are there. You see, you can run from God, but you can't hide. God will find you. And ain't no gangster like God. You see, you we have we have a holy God who will not let us off. We have a faithful God who will not let us down. We have a loving God who will not let us go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I declare to you that the reason why you're having a lot of problems is because you are running from God and God wants a yes. Yeah. And you know what? God is about to get gangster on you. Yeah. I'm just trying to help you. Yeah. You see, when God wants you to do something, mm -hmm. he 
won't leave you alone. He wants a yes. And nothing short of that will do. Do you notice the first words of the verse, verse 4 in our text? In verse 3 it says, God, well God had already told Jonah what he wanted to do, but verse 3 starts off, but, but Jonah. And then in verse 4 it starts off, after but Jonah it says, but the law. See, when God tell you to do something, amen, but you want to do whatever you want to do, God is going to come behind that, amen, with some showing up gangster. But the thing about it is God don't really have to get gangster. You can just say yes before he gets gangster. Can I get a witness? But Jonah. And then, well, but God. You see, but Jonah had his plan. But God had the final say. But let's not be too hard on Jonah. Do we not think the same way from time to time? God said it. But we have to put our little gangster in it. And your gangster can't box with God gangster. They used to say it like this, your arms are too short to box with God. Can I get a witness in here, somebody who knows that your arms are just too short to box with God? Can I get a witness in here who God had to get gangster on? You see, you're looking at a person, amen, you might think you see me now, but I don't look like what I've been through. I'm here today because God had to eventually get gangster on me. As a matter of fact, I'm here today because mama had to get danced on me a couple of times. <laughs> Somebody remember that? Mama had to get danced. God is the same way. We do not mind serving the Lord when it's convenient. But when God tells us to do something that we don't want to do, we rebel and disobey God. Mm -hmm. Am I talking to somebody here? Mm -hmm. We may not go to Tarshish, mm -hmm. but we go away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And some of you are on the run right now. Ooh, yeah. Jesus. Wow. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. God is just getting ready to write up an arrest warrant for you. And he's about to send in the marshals to come get you. The reason why you are still here today is because God is not through with you yet. Amen. And what I, what I like about God, he'll let you run for a little while. He let Jonah go all the way down to Joppa, find a ship, pay the fare, get on it. And God is watching them all the time, amen. Jonah just doing his thing, amen. I don't care what God said. He said, go to Nineveh. I don't care what he said. I'm going to do my own thing. Okay, it's my thing, and I'm going to do what I want to do. Can't nobody tell me who to do my thing to. But your gangster ain't good enough and ain't strong enough for God's gangster. Look at somebody say, this going on to surrender now. Before it get to be a little stormy. We think we know more than God knows. We think that we are in control. We think we can call all the shots and do as we please. Let me remind you that you can't get nobody, you can't get no greater, you can't get more powerful than God's gangster. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But God doesn't get gangster to hurt you. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. He gets gangster to get you where he wants you to go in your life. Mm -hmm. I think I might need to say that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God don't get gangster to hurt you. No. But he gets gangster 
to help you. He is a loving gangster. God will and God can get gangster when he has to. Has he ever had to get gangster on you? Well, let's, let's look more closely this morning at a real gangster. Amen? Because, you know, we got one of these. But then we got real gangsters. There are four primary characteristics of a gangster. And it describes every true gangster. First, a true gangster they give orders. They give orders. It's right there. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh. Somebody say Nineveh. Nineveh. That great city and cry against it, for its wickedness has come up against me. And watch this. Jonah turned gangster on God. He said, I'm Jonah. I'm a son of Avatar. You know how it was back in the day? You know, we, 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 we had posturing before the fight. <laughs> you don't know who I am. You don't know who you're dealing with. I'm Jonah. I'm the son of Amitab. You better recognize who I am. He said, but Jonah, after God told him the orders, he rose up and he went to Tarsus, to go to Tarsus, away from the presence of the Lord. How I many you know that you can run from God? But you can't hide. So the first thing they do, a real gangster, they give orders. But secondly, they had backup mm -hmm. and some strong weapons. Can I get a witness? Back in the day, we didn't place the fight like these young guys out here fighting either. We fought with our hands. But now, you know everybody got a little, a little something, something, a burn. A smoker, a gap. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A burner have backup. You see them people that talk all that stuff. Then when it got down to it, they man they lose their courage. But a real gangster have backup and strong weapons. When Jonah told the Lord what he wanted to do, God just said, "Cool." But he got thanks. Mm -hmm. He sent his backup. He sent a great strong wind. Because you see, the wind and the waves even are susceptible to God's gangster. Mm -hmm. Even they can take orders and obey his will. Mm -hmm. Can I get a witness? Yeah. It said, But the Lord sent out a great strong wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Peter was a gangster who cut off the ear of the Roman Pope when they came to arrest his boss, Jesus. Samson was once to have said, with a donkey's jawbone, I have made donkeys out of all of them. With a donkey's jawbone, I've killed a thousand men. Yeah, we got biblical gangsters. David was credited to killing 10,000 people to Saul's 1,000. Got back up. God said, okay, I'm going to show you who I am. I'm going to change the very course of nature to get your attention. I'm going to shake, I'm going to turn your world upside down just to get your attention. Because when I tell you that I want you to do where I want you to go and what I want you to do, I'm serious about what I told you. 
And you will never have the peace that you think you're going to have. Can I get a witness? Until you do what God tells you to do. Am I talking to somebody in here today? But not only do they have backup and strong weapons, but they are feared, revered, and respected. Amen? Back in the day, we knew who the gangsters were. We knew who the real ones were. Amen? But ain't no man's gangster can get like God's gangster. It said, watch this, it said in verse 5, And the sailors were afraid, and they cried every man unto his God, and they cast forth the, the cargo into the sea, even to lighten the ship. Well, look at what John is doing. He has gone down into the sides of the ship, and he's laying there, and he's snoring sleep. Amen. During God's death. And you know what? Some of us are, are, are thinking that we're sleeping, amen, and everything is good because we're on our way away from the presence of God. But you need to wake up to what God is doing, amen, to try to get your attention. He's sending you red flags after red flags of the red flags, and you are sleeping on the Lord. But he's not playing around. Even the sailors had the common sense to fear God mm -hmm. and to fear what was happening. They had never seen a storm like this and they were trained sailors. Yes, a real gangster is feared, revered, and respected. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had a witness. Yeah. 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 And finally, the last characteristic of a gangster is they get their way one way or another. It said right there, but God sent a huge storm at sea. The ship was about to break into pieces. The sailors were terrified. They called out of desperations to their gods. They threw everything that they were carrying overboard. Jonah, Jonah's down in the hole of the ship taking a nap. He was sound asleep. The captain came to him and said, what's this? Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray to your God. And that's a word right there for somebody today. Why are you sleeping? Don't you see what is going on around you? Don't you see that everything is crumbling around you? And you sleep? Look at somebody and say, wake up. You might have just saved their life. They said, maybe your God will see that we're in this trouble and maybe he will rescue us. Then they said, let's draw straws to identify what the problem is on this ship. Because we have never ran into something like this before. You see, when you are out of position, when you are out of place, and God wants to use you, you could affect everybody else that's on the ship that you're traveling on. When you are out of place, you could affect your entire family. The devil even knew that, amen? That's why he is so heavy after the brothers. Because he wants to get you out of place, amen? Because if he can get you out of place, then he can get the whole family and the whole ship will go down. Can I get a witness? He wants to put you back in your place. And when you are out of position, when you are not walking in your calling, when you are not wanting, walking in the things of God, amen, you put everything that attacks to you in danger. So the two straws had a little raffle. And Jonah got the short straw. Then they grilled him. He said, man, tell us what's going on, man. Why? They said, what's your work? Who are you? Where are you from? What country? What family? Because they knew that Jonah was 
out of place. Can I get a witness? And when you are not walking in the things of God and walking in your purpose and walking in your calling, amen, you will be out of place. You'll be like a fish out of water. You'll know you don't belong there and everybody else around you will know you don't belong there. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. He told me, he said, I'm a, I'm a Hebrew. I'm a child of God. Um, I, I worship God. The God of heaven who made sea and land. And then they became really frightened. They said, what on God's earth have you done? You don't belong here. And you have put all of us in danger. And as Jonah talked, the sailors realized that he was running from God. And they said to him, what are we going to do with you? To get rid of this storm. Let me tell you how Jonah was. Crazy he was. You see, by this time, the sea was wild and it was totally out of control. God's gangster was in full effect right now. Jonah and his craziness, because when you are walking away from God, your, your, your thinking is out of order. Your spirit is out of order. Your goals are out of order. Your objectives are out of order. Your behavior is out of order. Amen. When you are not walking in the purpose that you are ordained to walk in, you are out of order. Your thinking is out of order. Jonah got so crazy, he said, throw me overboard. Instead of, man, God told me what I was supposed to do. God told me where I was supposed to go. God told me who I was supposed to uh, go to. And I'm running in the opposite direction, trying to get away from the gangster of God. And God didn't want to get gangster. God just wanted him to, as soon as he told him, go to Nineveh. Amen. You would not have to go to Joppa. You won't even have to pay the fare to get on the boat. Because if God told you to go somewhere, he will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. You see, the will of God will never take you where the supply of God cannot keep you. But when you are walking out of the will of God, amen, you got to pay your own fare. Said, throw me overboard. Then the storm will stop. Throw me overboard, and then the gangster will chill out. I'm the cause of the storm. Get rid of me, and you'll rid yourself of the storm. But no, the men were trying to roll back to the shore. They made no headway. The storm only got worse and worse. It was wild, it was out of control, it was raging. Watch this. Then they, who were not even believers, they prayed to God. They did what Donna was supposed to do. They said, don't let us drown because of this man's life. Don't blame us for him being out of order. You are God. They said, do what you think is best. And so God gave them a mind and said, take my Prophet and throw him overboard. <laughs> so they took Jonah and they threw him overboard. And I don't mind, watch this, when the world throws me out of places I ain't supposed to be. This is the problem some of y'all have. 
You won't even let them throw you out of the place you ain't supposed to be. And you keep going back, trying to make it work, and it don't work. You keep trying to row back to the shore, and it ain't working. Can I get a witness? You keep going back to the same thing over and over again, knowing it ain't worked, knowing it ain't supposed to work, knowing you out of order. Can I get a witness? Knowing it ain't what God told you to do. You were trying to get God to bless what God never ordained. And God will never bless what he never ordained. You got to get right with God. And sometimes you got to go back to where God gave you that word and try to hear his voice all over again. You try to roll from there. And God wants you to go back to that intersection that you made the wrong turn at. Amen. Because somewhere, sometimes you can't get there from here. Sometimes you got to go back and get back on the road that you're supposed to be on. Look at somebody say, he's trying to help me. Because he's helping me. They threw him overboard, mother. And Sister Anna, when they threw him overboard, immediately, the sea was quieted down. The sailors were impressed. They were no longer terrified by the sea, but they were in awe of God. And the Bible tells me they started to worship him. Yeah. They offered a sacrifice and made vows. And I know today somebody knows what these sailors found out. And I wish I had somebody in here today who knows what these sailors find out. That, that God is an awesome God. Amen. And you can't beat God's gangster. Amen. So you might as well worship him in spirit and in truth. Can I get a witness? I wish I had somebody right about now to realize that God got too much gangster. Huh? And he's too powerful. He's too much God. He, he's too much Jehovah Jireh. He's too much Jehovah Nisi. And I will worship him. Can I get a witness? I done tried everything else and I failed. But I will worship the Lord because he's been good to me. He made a way out of nowhere. He fixed what was broke. Can I get a witness? And I got a, I got a, I got a reason to praise him. Does anybody else in here have a reason to praise him? But, Minister Taylor, that's not the end of God's gangster yeah. in this story. It said, not only did God calm the sea, mm -hmm. but remember now, Jonah is out in the middle of a calm sea with no life jacket. He's trying to stay afloat. He's treading water. Can I get a witness? And God, watch this, God called one of his gang members. You know, even the animals are subservient to the power of God. God called a, 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 a gang member called whale. You know, we got some whales, man. Whale came from wherever he was. Can I get a witness? He might have just got bailed out of jail. I don't know. Maybe he just he's on parole. I don't know. But whale came through. And God sent the whale, and the whale swallowed Jonah up. God told whale, eat him up. Not to kill him, but to keep him. And you might be in the belly of the whale right now, but it's not to kill you, it's to keep you, amen. God is trying to bring you to safety, and when he brings you to safety, can I get a witness? He will spit. You out. And I'm like, just spit me out, Lord. Can I get a witness? Spit me out. Do what you got to do, Lord. Keep me, and then when you're done with having me here in this prison, you spit me out. Can I get a witness? And some of us are here today because God spit us out. He said that the fish threw him up <laughs> on dry land. And Sister Hunt, it was probably, it doesn't say, but 
I, 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 I believe that uh, God spit him out somewhere in their child. You see, we always come back to the will of God at the point where we left it. You got to go back to Java and start there. Can I get a witness? And God's got a way of spitting you back. Amen. To where you're supposed to be so that you can get it right. Oh, I'm going to just help somebody right there. The important thing here is not that God could or would prepare such a fish. The important thing is that God won't let us go without a fight. He gets gangster over your soul. He protects us. He preserves us. He forgives us. And he recommissions us. There's no greater gangster than God. And God uses his own weapons. But the weapons of our warfare are not common. But they are mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. And he uses what is his weapons? He uses prayer and praise, faith and hope, love and peace. I, I, I believe that when Jonah was in the belly of the whale, that he developed a prayer life and he developed a praise life. Lord, I thank you. There's no gangster like God's gangster. Al Capone is gone. Lucky Luciano is gone. John Gotti is gone. John Dillinger is gone. Bonnie and Clyde are gone. Frank Lucas is gone. Chucky Williams is gone. But Jesus is still gangster. He was wounded for our transgression. He, he was bruised for our iniquities. And, and the chastisement of our peace is upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Judas couldn't fool him. Herod couldn't kill him. Sin couldn't seduce him. Death couldn't keep him. And the grave couldn't hold him. Can't nobody. Do me like Jesus. I wish I had somebody here today who knew how good God is. Won't he get gangster? Won't he get you to do what you're supposed to do? Is there anybody here under the will of God? Is there anybody here that's doing what the Lord says? Won't he do it? Won't he make a way out of nowhere? Won't he do it? on me. He's not done with you. He's not through with you. I know you're going through some things right now. You could maybe seem like you're just out in the middle of the ocean. It seems like you're just with a ship without a sail. But Jesus got a gang. Can I get a witness? He got a host of angels that's watching over you right now. You got a gang member walking, watching over you right now. And I ain't talking about the crypts of the blood. But I am talking about the blood that will never lose its power. Can I get a witness that the blood of Jesus will never lose its power? It reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. My blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose his power. His blood got gangster. His hand got gangster. His 
Somebody said, it reaches 